No matter what happened, my financial house stood solid. Any home is built on a solid foundation. You got all the pundits right now, I know, watching this video. Oh, no, I wouldn't do it that way. I wouldn't do it that way. Listen, I've got the experience here of 21 years, 21 years of seeing what has worked and what hasn't worked. You guys got theory. A lot of people watching this video right now, you got theory. I got 21 years of actually being in the shit. And I've seen all this stuff. You got certain hypotheticals in your theories, but you haven't lived through it. No matter how fancy that may all sound, if you don't have the finances, the cash flow to fill it and fund it, the best plans lose. What's cracking, everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And with everything going on right now, you got high interest rates, another peak in the interest rates by the Federal Reserve, you got high inflation, you got a current housing recession, and a pending official announcement of the current recession that we're in by the White House, but they're delaying the actual announcement of it. Who knows why? There's one thing that always stands the test of time, and that is never departing from the financial fundamentals of building your financial home. So in today's compilation video, I'm gonna be breaking down two different things. Number one, how to build and or restructure your financial home in 2022. And number two, a quick system that first generation cash flow millionaires use to know where to put their safe money, their serious money known as the laser test. Liquidity, safety, rate return, and tax advantages. So without wasting time, let's get into this. So listen, I've had the rare, the very rare experience of being in business and being inside the insurance industry, being in one, one industry for 21 years. I started my career in the insurance industry at 24 years old, and today I'm 46 years old, about to turn 47. I had the rare, rare, rare experience and timeline of being over two decades in this industry. And a lot of, lots of times people say, man, I got these ideas, got these thoughts, and then, you know, put your money here, put your money there. I got these ideas on this, I got the ideas on that. And here's what I discovered. Here's what I discovered. I just stayed with one thing for 21 years. A lot of people try to distract me and to do other things with my money, how to do other things with my career, focus my attention in other areas. But I found one thing, 21 years in one thing. And this is the industry I've made my millions in. And oftentimes I've seen, you know, banks, when, I, when, the, when the hard times hit, crumble. When, I, when I've seen uh, 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 real estate, uh, everything's great during great times, but down times, I've seen things like 401k plans and IRAs, great when it's great times, but tough times, here, here's what I discovered. Come over here real quick. So here, here's, what, here's what I discovered. If you want to build your financial house, I'm, giving you an, uh, I'm gonna give you a, a, an illustration here in a second, but if you wanna build your financial house, the first thing you gotta build it on is solid ground. In this case, a brick. Not on paper, people on paper were millionaires. People on paper, a uh, net worth, uh, they had to wait for the economy. The economy changed, boom, the, the wealth was gone. But no, if you wanna build your wealth, your financial home, you gotta build it on solid ground based on principles, and values, values and principles, what do you stand for? Oftentimes I see so many people chasing the dollar too fast, too soon, get rich quick. Next thing you know, they burn out. If they're on drugs, they're on alcohol, they're on addictions because they had to deal with the stresses of the job. But if you want to build your financial house, boom, values and principles, what do you stand for? And oftentimes I see, you know what? Sometimes, uh, sometimes a lot of good things happen with time, not in six months, not in 12 months, not in two years, not in five years. Certain things just happen with time. I've had my ups and downs, ups and downs, but I'm so glad, at least from a financial perspective, that once I decided to build my financial home on this financial tool called life insurance, no matter what happened, no matter what happened, my financial house stood solid. And people are wondering, how much do I believe in it? Well, this is the reason why I have a ton of life insurance. I showed in the last video. Well, Matt, is it one type of insurance? I got various types of insurance. It's just not one policy. I started with a $150 policy when I was 24, 25 years old. I started graduating, bought different styles I will discuss here in a second. But listen, let's, let's take a quick uh, 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 an idea here. I want to share with you something. I'll share a quick drawing. Oftentimes, people want to build a financial house, right? The first thing they do is put money inside 401ks. Okay, why? Because it's at the job. 401ks, IRAs. Now they want to buy, now they want to buy a home, right? Now they want to buy a home, an actual house, piece of real estate. Why? Because the way to create wealth in our country is through real estate ownership. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, what a lot of people try to tell you to do. Get your credit right, right? Get your finances right. Get your money inside your 401k. Max out your 401k. Put all your money inside 401k. 
Buy yourself a house, the next thing you know, 30, 40 years, you'll be rich. Listen, it doesn't take too far long ago to realize that in 08, 09, just 10, 11 years ago, this house here crumbled. And then the sad part about this, and then that's when people want to buy life insurance. And if this is your house, and the winds of life come blowing by and put stresses on this house, what happens to this house? This house crumbles. So here's how you should build your financial house. It should start with insurance. That's the solid ground. When, 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 the, when the shit hits the fan, you got life insurance to build, to build from. And by the way, life insurance isn't just for dying. I'll give you an example here in a second. And then you start building your 401k plan, your IRAs. Right? You start building your savings, your investments, and then buy, then buy your real estate. And oftentimes people get it all twisted all around. And then, and then other things. You want to add? You want to get fancy with it? Throw, throw Bitcoin, throw Forex, throw stocks, bonds, and mutual funds outside of your 401k and IRA. Gold, silver. But the first thing you build it on is insurance. So, some, by the way, some of you I got all the pundits right now I know watching this video. Oh, no, I wouldn't do it that way. I wouldn't do it that way. Listen, I've got the experience here of 21 years. 21 years of seeing what has worked and what hasn't worked. You guys got theory. A lot of people watching this video right now, you got theory. I got 21 years of actually being in the shit. And I've seen all this stuff. You got your hypotheticals and your theories, but you haven't lived through it. See, there's a difference between being smart and being wise. Listen, smart is, te is tested through experiences. Smart is tested through time. A lot of people are smart, but they haven't tested it through time. You're smart, your theory, but you haven't proven that theory through the worst of times. I'm here to tell you, man, I'm one of those rare guys that have stood the test. Of, listen, I can't tell you, if I go in my, in, my, in my business cards, I can't tell you how many real estate agents, lawyers, real estate lawyers, can tell you how many tax people, mortgage people, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds people, especially downtown here in Chicago. You know, this is known as Second City. This is where the Chicago Board of Trade and the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange is. I can't tell you what I've witnessed here in the last, just fit, not 20 years, just the last 50 years, because the first 20, the first five years of my career, was, everything was great. Everything was going great. It was the bull market of the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. And then the dot-com bubble hit, and it took three, four years later for everybody to start getting laid off. Well, the market's corrected. Banks started laying, laying people off. Real estate change shifted. All these different things. By the way, I am not saying not to get real estate. I'm not saying not to get stocks by your mutual funds. I'm not saying don't put your money inside 401k play. All I'm saying is this. Build your house on the first financial brick, which should be insurance, risk management. Plan for the worst, but expect the best. Now, you see the words risk management. Make sense so far? You got value out of this? Please make sure you hit like. Now let's get into the next portion of this video about what rich people do with their money that broke people don't do with their money when it comes to building their financial home. Let's get into it. Let me just share with you a little bit of baseline, a little bit of foundation in why a lot of people get their money wrong. This is not something that you just say, okay, I'm gonna watch one video, I'm done with this. You need to reach out and say, listen, I need to find some wise counselors and advisors who have been there, done that, who've been through some good times, been through some bad times, and still living to talk about it. One of the strongest structures in the history of humankind is the triangle, the pyramids of Egypt. And when you build your foundation of your home, you want to build it in an area where it's strong no matter what happens, weather, changes in environment, this structure will stand strong, like your house, like your financial house. So at the bottom of your financial structure, when you're building your financial home, the first thing you want is certainty when it comes to income, certainty when it comes to cash flow, because no matter what happens over here with life insurance, whatever you decide to put your money into are fancy words such as asset allocation, diversification, diversification of your financial strategies. No matter how fancy that may all sound, if you don't have the finances, the cash flow to fill it and fund it, the best plans lose. So you have to find ways to make sure you solidify your cash flow first. I served eight years in the United States Marine Corps and I didn't learn any of this stuff until maybe my last year in. Why? Because I went through some financial challenges. I got married, divorced, filed bankruptcy, found myself in a very bad position. I found myself as a single father in custody of my kids. So you have to address this thing called risk. And usually in this conversation about risk, that's when I stumbled across how to mitigate and minimize risk 
which is through life insurance. The next thing you should build upon then is your savings for emergencies and opportunities. Next, you have to have a debt management strategy for good debt and bad debt. And then you start talking about your investments. And then you start talking about a 401k. And then you start talking about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, crypto, collectibles, etc., etc., gold and silver. The challenge with a lot of people, though, they got their money like this. It's all turned upside down. Instead of building a solid financial foundation from the bottom up, it's from the top up where the investments are the first thing they talk about, and then real estate, and then debt, then savings, and oh, let's figure out this thing called cash flow. The sad thing about where a lot of people think about money is just finding ways to get rich quick. The best strategy is how to get rich methodically over time, so therefore it lasts. So here's what you should do. A couple things that you should consider. Number one, you should have a plan for your next moves. What's the next moves as soon as I get my budget together? As soon as I solidify my income, as soon as I solidify this, that, blah, blah, blah. What's my plan? What's my next moves? Am I happy here? If I'm not happy, I need to have an exit strategy. If I'm working on plan A and plan B is not where I want to be, that then becomes then plan B. You got to find now a plan A you're transitioning into. So plan your next move. Number two, you need persistency, commitment, urgency. You need to surround yourself with wise counselors and advisors. You know, surround yourself with people that are just not YouTube gurus or YouTube channels like myself. Like, if you're seeing this video and you don't know who I am, please don't rest upon this video to help you make your decision with your finances or, in this case, your insurance. Please take this video, read these books, watch many other videos to fill up your mind to help you create an educated and well informed decision. What most do, however, is they fill their life with impatience, with desperation, get rich quick. Top of opportunities, they're lazy, they don't really want to work it, so therefore they wing it, and uh, they only teach themselves, they're self-taught. Listen, I get self-taught, but if you want to learn a very important topic, such as life insurance strategies, such as planning your financial future, is a very important thing that you surround yourself with a lot of people that have been there and done that, versus you just trying to figure out as you go along, because a lot of these folks who have been there, done that, the perspective they can give you is time and experience, which you do not have yet. All right, so I hope you now get a better understanding of how to build your financial home so when the big bad wolves come knocking at the door, you know how to withstand the storm. When he huffs and he puffs and he tries to blow your house down, you stand strong in the midst of the storm. And speaking of that, when the recession does officially get announced and the sky seems to be falling, how do you withstand that financial storm? Where do the millionaires and the ultra-rich put their money? Now, this next clip will explain the laser test. Liquidity, safety, rate of return, and tax advantages. Let's get into it. So, I want to get in today a system for you to have a very logical application for how to process where to put your serious money, money that you know needs to be there down the road for you to retire, to send your kids to college, to invest in other businesses. I'm not talking about being speculative or risky. I'm talking about your serious, safe money. And I have a system because oftentimes when families and friends get together and they argue and they discuss and even debate on where to put their money because people are very argumentative and defensive when it comes to their finances because when emotion is high, guess what happens? Logic is down. Emotion is high, logic is down. However, using a system, logic goes up because emotions are down, you can process and see things clearly for what they are and what they do. So money needs a home, right? So in this system, I put down all the different things I could put my money into. In this example, banks, okay? I can put my money inside a bank. I could put my money inside a 401k or slash retirement plan, whether it be a 403b uh, for a nonprofit, a 457 if you're working for a city, a municipality, a TSP, a thrift savings plan if you're working for the federal government. But pretty much the same category here and saying stock market slash 401k plan for retirement. Real estate, I can put money, money inside a property or properties or this mystery industry. But I wanted to also have some characteristics. What are the characteristics I'm talking about? Based on my system, I want my money to have these characteristics. And I call this my laser test. What does laser test stand for? L stands for liquidity. Whoosh, liquidity. I want my money liquid. If I, get a, if I gotta put my money there, earn a particular rate of return, let it marinate there for a period of months or years, I wanna make sure I can access it with an 800 number or an EFT transfer back into my bank account. The next one is S stands for safety. I want my money safe. I don't wanna worry about my money. I wanna look over my back. 
I want my money to be there. Number three, I want my money earning a decent rate of return, outpacing inflation. And last but not least, cherry on top, I want to make sure my money also has significant tax advantages. So when I pull my money out, I either minimize or eliminate what I pay in federal and or state income tax. So let's get started. So when we're talking about banks, is money in the bank liquid? Yeah, actually it is. So money in the bank is liquid. Sure it is. You put my money in and I can take my money out, whether it be a bank CD. I have to just marinate it there for a year or two or three or five years, depending on how long that bank CD is there for. However, I do pull my money out before the early withdrawal period. I have to pay an early withdrawal penalty. But for the most part, money inside banks are liquid. Checking accounts, saving accounts, CDs. Yes, it's liquid. Now, is money safe? Sure it is. Of the FDIC amount, which is $250,000. So just in case my money is there, marinating in a bank account at 0.01% interest, 0.5% interest, 0.8% uh, uh, interest. At least my money is liquid. At least my money is safe. At least up to $250,000. Number three, does my money earn a rate of return? I just kind of took a jab at that, didn't I? Uh, no, it doesn't earn a rate of return. Why? I mean, are you fired up about your money earning a 0.5% interest rate? I mean, are you fired up about your money earning a 0.8% interest rate? At least round up to one. And even then, if you even round up to one, are you fired up and excited to open up a checking account, savings account, a money market account at your local bank? Probably not. Maybe back in the 70s and 80s when inflation was the highest, where people were getting double-digit returns back in the 70s and 80s, but it's not the 70s and 80s. The banks are paying a poor interest rate, so therefore you have a poor rate of return on your money. And last but not least, does money have a tax advantage? So if I put my money in, inside, let's say, a savings account, and it's earning an interest rate, or a, uh, a, um, a money market account or a CD, I have to pay income taxes, because I have to address this 1099-INT interest that you're earning money, you have to add that interest, so it's kind of slap in the face. So you have X amount of dollars in there, you have a point, you know, 0.5% interest rate, and you have to owe tax on three, four, five dollars that you earned there throughout the year. But guess what, you have to add that to your adjusted gross income, and guess what you might have to pay? Income taxes on that money that you earn in the bank. So two out of four, is, money, is my money liquid? Yes, safe, yes. Rate of return high, nope. And tax advantages, no. Okay, now the next home for money could be the stock market specifically inside a 401k. Now, with that being said, I want to make sure I disclose I am not a registered investment advisor. I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I giving financial advice. Okay, legal disclaimer done. Okay, but I want to educate you on the things that you need to ask a person that does give you investment advice on these areas. So, for example, if you have your money inside a retirement plan and you put your money inside the stock market with inside that retirement plan, more specifically with inside a 401k, now, is that money liquid? Well, traditionally speaking, no, it's not liquid. You have to be 59 and a half years old to withdraw this money without paying a dime in early withdrawal penalty, but you will have to pay income tax. Now, with that being said, I'm doing this video in 2020 during the pandemic for Vlogmas 2020 and a specific provision called the CARES Act, which was passed by President Trump, says there might be some provision there that you don't have to pay an early withdrawal penalty if you withdraw money from your 401k, nor potentially do you have to pay any withdrawals that you make from the capital and interest you earned on that capital with inside that if you defer, I believe it's over a three-year period. But again, check with your tax professional about how to properly do that, specifically in the year of the 2020 pandemic when you are taking money out of your 401k plan. But potentially, Potentially, only in that regard, can money be withdrawn, potentially without paying a dime of tax, out of your 401k. The second area, is money inside the stock market safe? Well, I would say yes and no, right? Why would I say yes and no? It's safe when it's growing, but no when it's, the stock market is dropping. As we know, the stock market, when there's no ceiling, there's also no basement. You can earn a lot of money, but in any given year, in any given moment, you can also lose a lot of money. And how do you predict that? Nobody knows. So I'd hate for you to be retired at 60, 65 years old. If you take an early retirement, 50, 55 years old, who knows? Whenever you decide to want to retire, 70, 78, no matter what. When you retire, you don't want a stock market to drop and causes your income that you were able to withdraw from your 401k or your retirement plan to be less because you had less capital and principal inside it to make a withdrawal from. You just don't want to be caught in the wrong year. And again, if I had a crystal ball to tell you when the stock market would drop, I'd tell you exactly how to move your money, but who has that? Nobody. Third thing, back to our filter. Does it have a decent rate of return? Of course it does. But then again, of course it doesn't. So is it safe? Yes and no. Does it have a decent rate of return? Yes and no. And number four, because again, you can lose money inside a 401k plan because it's tied to the stock market and there's no guarantees in the stock market. And number four, 
taxation. Uh, yes, it's tax advantage or not tax at all when it's growing. But no, when you withdraw this money for your retirement account, the reason Uncle Sam's, hey, go grow, 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 grow your money tree. Let it grow, let it grow, let it grow. So therefore, it becomes this million dollar harvest. Now I'm going to tax you at 25%. Now I'm going to tax you at 30%. So yes, when it's growing, there's no taxes. When you withdraw for income, guess what now? You have to pay that tax. So it's yes and no. So the home of money, based on my laser test, right? What do I have? No in liquidity, half on safe, half on rate, decent rate of return, and half on tax advantage. Okay, well, let's go to real estate. Another home for money. I remember uh, people say, hey, man, you know, when you make some money, go buy some real estate. Make some money, buy some real estate. Make some money, buy some real estate. Well, is money inside real estate? You buy some real estate right now. You put a down payment. Buy some property. Buy some real estate investment properties. Three flat, four flat, two unit, whatever. Apartments. Is your money liquid? The answer is flat no. The only way you get money out of real estate is two ways. You either refinance your property, cash out refinance, or number two, you sell the property and then at the closing table, you get a check from the title company of the difference between your cost fees and expenses of the transaction and also from what you owe from the mortgage company and that net proceeds is now your check, your equity, which is now a check. That's how you get money out of real estate, whether you cash out refinance or you sell the property. So right now, money is not liquid. It's not like you can chop down the wall and say, hey, I need 10 grand, here we go. Number two, is money inside real estate safe? The answer is, well, yes and no. Depending on your zip code, it's yes because some people didn't face a drop even during the Great Recession and the equity they'd have inside the property. I mean, people inside, you know, West Palm Beach or Naples, Boca Raton, you know, uh, San Francisco, maybe your property or zip code did not face a drop in the equity of the property. But neighborhoods I grew up in, Chicago, Cicero, Stickney, Berwyn, Santa Ana, California, right? Those areas that you, live in potentially may drop based on the local community uh, real estate value and you could potentially lose money inside real estate in, in terms of value. We've heard many people have less equity in the property and more they owed and people are having a choice. Do I keep the property I owe more in this house than what it's worth or do I just give the keys back to the bank and say, hey, you deal with it. But uh, that what was happening. That was a reality for a lot of people in the, during the Great Recession 2008, 2009. Now, third filter, rate of return. Does real estate have a decent rate of return? Again, depends on your area, depends on your zip code. Depends on your zip code, yes and no. They're based on some areas, there was a decent rate of return in terms of the value and equity and appreciation of the value of the property. In some areas, it declined in value. Tax advantages, well, yes, real estate does have some significant tax advantages and, and whether you're real estate investing or you have property, whether you sell the equity and you're single, you're up to 250 or with you're married up to $500,000 of equity of the value of the gain, gain of the value of the property, you might have to pay any capital gains income tax. Uh, you may want to do a 1031 exchange from one property to a like-kind property, like-kind exchange, what they call inside real estate exchange, of a 10, we call it a 1031 exchange, you might have to have to pay income tax on the gains you have with real estate appreciation with inside your property. So that's the benefit of, of, of real estate. So does it pass completely my four filters? Uh, uh, liquidity, no. Uh, safety, yes and no. Rate of return, yes and no. And tax advantages, yes. Okay. What about this mystery category? Is it possible there is something with liquidity? Is it possible that it does have safety? Is it possible that it does have a decent rate of return above the pace of inflation? And is it possible that it does have significant tax advantages? Yes, there is such a category. It's a category a lot of people don't talk about. I don't know why, probably due to the aging sales force and uh, a demographic of this category. But what is this fourth home of money? This fourth home of money is the, not the stock market, not the real estate market, not the bank market, but the Life insurance industry. Yes, life insurance is more for than dying. Life insurance is more for what? Life. Life insurance for living. First of all, it's a selfless act, right? People buy life insurance because they love their family, they love their spouse, they, love, right? they want to make sure that somebody they love is financially prepared and taken care of long after they've passed away. But furthermore than that, life insurance is a significant tax advantaged haven for your money to grow and accumulate and even if you need benefits from the policy or policies that you may obtain you might not ever have to pay a dime in income tax so let me go over this again is the money inside life insurance policies liquid yes you can either take a loan 
or withdrawal from these type of policies ba based on their early withdrawal penalties and the surrender charge schedules. You have to ask your life insurance agent about that when you can properly and appropriately take money out of a policy. Kind of similar to how a, a bank CD uh, uh, approach, but not necessarily the same thing. But there are some early withdrawal provisions that you can either minimize, mitigate, or eliminate by understanding the loan withdrawal provision. But for the most part, you can take money out of a life insurance policy. You don't have to die to use it. Number two, is it safe? Well, based on the drop in the stock market, there's specific policies out there, whether it be whole life, universal life, or index universal life. Most people that look at life insurance policies say, oh, your whole life sucks, or you know, trash value, whatever the case may be. Listen, there's more styles of life insurance than just whole life. And oftentimes people just try to categorize life insurance into one thing. Listen, it's an asset class. And thanks to capitalism, thanks to competition, thanks to the growth of our insurance industry, there are more financial products in the life insurance industry. They're specifically designed for helping one in the retirement planning process. So money can be in a position where you don't lose capital. You don't lose previous year's gains inside a life insurance policy. Listen, I've owned a policy for 20 years. I have not had any losses with inside my life insurance policies. Matter of fact, I used money outside my life insurance policy to invest in businesses. The third thing, does it earn a decent rate of return? Listen, stock market gains, stock market losses, this is not variable policies I'm talking about. There's a policy out there called variable universal life policy, that's a security. Again, I'm not an investment advisor. Again, I'm not a registered investment advisor or financial advisor, I'm not giving you investment advice. But check with your financial advisor about variable policies, but again, you can lose money inside those policies too as well. Now, with tax advantages, because of the significant advantage of life insurance using um, section 101A, 7702, just to name a couple tax codes off the top of my head, you can take money from an insurance policy smartly without ever having to pay a dime in tax. Now, I've got a video out there that shows a couple case studies Now, certain entrepreneurs say that you wouldn't believe would actually pull money out of a life insurance policy to fund their dream, their business, and fund publicly traded companies as of today. With that being said, guys, the four homes of money here, liquidity, safety, rate of return, we compared banks, stock market, real estate, life insurance. Again, not one is for everyone. I can't say there's one all be all, but if you are asking a question, hey, where should I put my money? You say, how do I build my financial home? Any home is built on a solid foundation. You wanna make sure you put that foundation through these filters. So when you build your financial home, right, and the big winds of life come crashing and it knocks down your house, you wanna make sure you build or rebuild on a solid foundation and get back up again. And uh, when you're building wealth, when you're building legacy, when building generational wealth, you wanna make sure you have a solid foundation of which you can build on that no matter what happens, you can continue your game plan for your family long into the future, regardless of any crisis or economic downturns. Well, there you have it. So if you've gotten value out of this video, and if you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted. And the next time we upload our next episode, please put your comments in the comment section below. Your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it down in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out these two other videos here to help you understand how to build your financial home no matter what happens in the marketplace. Bear market, bull market, recession, acceleration in the marketplace, you'll always be ahead of your financial game. Now make sure you stay posted to this YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, I'm your money smart guy from Dallas, Texas, and until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to smart and be money smart today.